everybody. It is lovely to see you. We're going to open the meeting with some um, praising and thanking the Lord in song. And we're going to do Let the Spirit of the Lord Saturate Your Soul.
think of what the Lord has done for me Cause he rescued me He set me free Don't let today go by Speak of what the Lord has done for me Cause he rescued me He set me free See me now that I'm born again Just like he said he would And I've been lifted up by his spirit And you should see me now
give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That uh, yeah, this is the promise that the Lord has given his people. That those that overcome, those that are able to continue in God's word, you know, through the things that perhaps uh, come upon us in this world, that we overcome these things and we know that uh, Lord, the Lord is with us and will uh, bless us and uh, yeah, actually uh, yeah, help us in these things in our life. But uh, yeah, those people, they're the ones that the Lord will be their God and we shall be his children. We'll turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And in verse 12 it says, Now if Christ be preached that he is risen from the dead, how is it that some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there's no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith is also vain. Yes, and we have found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. You are yet in your sins. Then they which also have fallen asleep in Christ, or those that have died that are spirit-filled, are perished. And if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we have all people most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. That uh, the scriptures here are saying, uh, and this was a time where uh, you know, there was uh, some people in Corinth saying, well, the, there is no resurrection. And if there is no resurrection, then Christ isn't, uh, you know, um, hasn't risen also. That if uh, you know, we believe in Christ, if we believe that he is the son of God and that he's been risen again, then there is an inheritance for us. This inheritance is there for us because it is uh, you know, through Christ that uh, we are God's children, that uh, you know, we have you know, this hope, this faith that uh, the scriptures talk about there, that uh, you know, if our preaching was in vain, then so is our faith. But uh, because uh, Christ has rise from, risen from the dead, you know, this is the inheritance that we have you know, of uh, the Lord, that uh, you know, there is this uh, you know, eternal life. And as it's uh, uh, referred there in verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept, the first of those that have died and then risen again. He was the first and uh, yeah, we will uh, yeah, see the Lord and we will be uh, risen if uh, the Lord doesn't uh, return uh, before we, uh, we die. But uh, you know, if uh, you know, we uh, die in uh, you know, the, the Lord, we are also going to be uh, raised just as uh, you know, the, uh, Christ was as well. We'll move on to Hebrews uh, chapter 11 and verse 1. Talking about faith here, and this is a, a great chapter of uh, faith in the scriptures. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed uh, that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. By faith Abel offered a, to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that, that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it uh, being uh, the dead yet speak. And by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. But before the translation, he had his uh, testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house, for which uh, he condemned the world. And he became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place where he should receive an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing where he went. And by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, tents with Isaac and Jacob, 
the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang uh, even of one as him as uh, you know, uh, a good as good as dead. So many as the stars in the sky and the multitude and the sand by which the seashore was innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them, confessed that they were uh, strangers and pilgrims of the earth. For they say such things and declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they'd been mindful of that country from where they came out, they might have had the opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. And uh, he, these are examples of people in the, uh, in the Old Testament there, people of great faith, great faith that they uh, went through some uh, pretty substantial trials, went through some pretty massive things in their life, and they overcome. They were uh, faithful. They looked at the things that the Lord had, to, uh, had promised them, knowing that there was a better thing to come. And these people didn't have the Holy Ghost. As it spoke about there, that they had not received the promise, but they had seen them afar off. They knew that it was going to be. They knew these things that we were going to, uh, to be able to see in these days. And they knew that through staying uh, you know, the course, being faithful to the Lord, that he would uh, you know, see them through. And in the examples there, we had uh, Sarah you know, receive strength to conceive a child there and delivered when she was past age, as good as dead, it said there. That uh, you know, when she first heard that she was going to bear a son, that uh, she laughed, she mocked, she didn't believe straight away. She thought, how can this be? But it was through faith, you know, her, her knowledge of knowing that uh, the Lord was going to be faithful. She conceived this, uh, this child and uh, you know, we know that uh, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, you know, family uh, you know, that uh, came fr from her there. So these are examples of those who stayed the course. They overcame you know, through their faith. We'll turn now to uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to uh, his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice. Now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love, in whom though uh, you see him not, yet believe, rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glo glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the, pro uh, the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, they prophesied of the grace that should come unto us, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which uh, was in them did uh, signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should uh, follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us did they minister, the things which are now are reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things are the angels desire to look into. And this is what we were t uh, touching on a little bit there in, uh, in Hebrews. In verse 10, of which salvation the prophets had inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. That uh, they prophesied of this uh, grace, they prophesied of the, whole, of the comforter, of the spirit dwelling inside his people. They knew it was going to come, but they didn't get to see it. 
They weren't of the, uh, the time of the Spirit. They were in the time of the prophets there. They uh, were faithful people who never received the promise. And uh, today, we're able to be faithful people because we have the promise. We have the Spirit. We have uh, the Lord dwelling inside us. That uh, for us to, uh, to obtain, to overcome, to see this inheritance that the Lord is uh, you know, promising us, and as we read about there in Revelation 21, we have the Spirit within us to be able to guide us, to, uh, to, to, to fill us to overcoming or to overflowing so that we don't need to do it in our own strength, that we can do it in God's strength. And uh, that leads us to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And uh, we'll take it up in verse 16. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he takes the wise uh, in their own uh, craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, and they that are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Now, we don't overcome through our wisdom. We don't overcome through our strength. We don't overcome through our natural abilities. We overcome through God. We overcome through faith. We overcome in this time through his spirit that we can be filled you know, with this spirit that he has promised, this comforter that, uh, as it says uh, there, if any, any among you seem wise in this world, let him become a fool so that he may be wise. Forget about the things of this world and remember the things of, of God's word. You know, these are the things that uh, you know, we have this inheritance. We'll uh, just go back a chapter to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. For God has revealed them unto him by his Spirit. For the Spirit search all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what uh, man knows the things of um, man, save the Spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knows no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we uh, have received not the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. That uh, you know, we, It's through the Spirit that we get to see this inheritance. It's, uh, as verse, uh, um, I think it's verse 9 there, it says, For as it is uh, written, I has not seen, nor has he heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. We can barely imagine the things that the Lord has in store for us. He talks about in Revelation, you know, streets paved in gold and jewels and, and that there is no uh, night for the glory of the Lord shall uh, light that place. That's as much as what we can fathom, you know, that we're able to perhaps uh, uh, conceptualise these things you know, through jewellery and gold and, and how magnificent and how glorious this inheritance will be for us. But uh, we only see through uh, a glass darkly, the scriptures talk about. We see a little bit of the inheritance, but we can see it through the Spirit. Because uh, no man can know the things of God unless he has the Spirit of God. We'll um, go to 2 John chapter uh, 1 and verse 5. And now I beseech you, though as uh, not as I have written a new commandment unto you, but that which we have heard from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love that we should walk, under his, walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have uh, heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. 
the many the deceivers have uh, entered into this world who confess that uh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And, and um, yeah, this is a, a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which you have wrought, but to those things or that we receive a full reward. That uh, you know, this is uh, what we are reminded uh, to do here in verse 8. Look to ourselves that we lose not those things which we have uh, done, but, the, but that we receive a full reward. That uh, the reward that we have you know, of uh, the Lord, you know, that we do get that full reward. That, uh, you know, as it said there in verse 7, for many deceivers are entered in the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That uh, we read uh, there in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, that if there's a Christ who came in the flesh, that was risen again, then this is uh, you know, the inheritance that we have. That w he was the first of those that would uh, be uh, born or resurrected from the dead. You know, the first to be able to obtain that inheritance because it is only through that that those that uh, have gone before us that have been spirit-filled since the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that they will be re you know, raised from the dead to go into that uh, you know, the, uh, the new city, the inheritance that we read there in uh, Revelation uh, 21 that uh, you know, this is the promise of the Lord. We'll finish up in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the uh, joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. But consider him that endured such a contradiction of sinners against himself, lest we be wearied and faint in our mind. That uh, here we have Jesus Christ, the example, that uh, you know, he, he uh, you know, went to the cross, despised the shame, yet sits now at the right hand of the throne of God. And it says, consider him that can, uh, endured such a contradiction of sinners against himself, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the scriptures talk about you know, the, the, the pure lamb, you know, that, uh, the, the, the lamb without blemish, Jesus Christ who was without sin, this contradiction of sinners you know, against him, he died to take on our sin. And uh, as we saw that you know, he was risen again and uh, you know, he now sits at the right hand of God. And uh, you know, here we uh, see in this uh, last verse that we're reading, that uh, you know, lest we be weary and faint in our mind. You know, let's take that example of the Lord of the of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ that He went through something that was uh, horrific, yet didn't faint, didn't uh, you know, uh, you know, decide to take the easy way out. He said, you know, that it's not His will, but His Father's will to be done. And uh, you know, we are joint heirs with Christ, as the Scriptures talk about that we are able to, uh, to continue on, to not faint. You know, and we're able to do that, not through our natural ability, but through the spirit that is within us, through the power of the Lord that is within us, the, the Lord that created the heavens and the earth, his power is within us. And it's uh, through that power that we're able to uh, remain focused on the things of the Lord. We're able to overcome we're able to continue in God's word. And as we uh, read out that uh, scripture that we uh, started there with in Revelation 21, he that overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. That this is the promise of the Lord. That as uh, we overcome the things in this world, not through our own strength, but through God's strength, he will be our God and we will be his children. Amen. Thank you.